It's just two caps taped together. Two M caps taped together means you can you can carry them like that. That's cool. Yeah, somebody made this with like strap lugs, so you could actually carry it like that. But I think I'd be a bit you'd be a bit brave to sort of walk with it down here. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's literally just simple bit of DIY. Two caps, some gaffer tape or whatever, and then you've got back to back. Well, this is a bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting to make a video about this lens at all. But before we get into that, I just want to mention something that you may or may not have seen in the description box. My affiliate links have changed, and that's because I'm proud to announce that I've partnered up with Adorama again to use their affiliate links down in the box below. So if you're watching the videos and you're wondering, oh, where can I get that gear? Or I wonder what gear Kai is using? You can go to the description box and click through to Adorama. Thoroughly recommended. Anyway, back to the lens, which I didn't think I was gonna like, but I do kind of like. This was a lens that I first encountered way back in December, when Dan was on the trading room floor buying and selling and buying. <laughs> they buy one, get one free. Yeah, buy one, get one free. Special <laughs> Christmas deal. Dan just purchased a cheaper one, eight fifty. They only do it once a year for one special yeah. customer, right? You... Why don't they do the rest of it, though? <laughs> the rest of what? The black bit. The black bit. Yeah. Good. Good. What? Do you... Why don't they do the black? Oh, I see. They're... And trying to sell me stuff. Oh, maybe I won't buy it then. You're stuck with it, Dan. No, I don't mind. And then Dan eventually bought the Light Lens Lab 35mm 8 element. Now, you, now you're talking. Ooh. Look at that. Light Lens Lab China. So this is, they, they recreate old lenses that are really expensive, basically, don't they? And that's essentially why I didn't like the idea of their lenses. Their concept is to replicate old famous lenses. In my mind, it's a knockoff, and that's just totally wrong. And on top of that, I felt they were just a bit too high priced for what they are. This light lens lab costs £909 or from £909 because now they've got a whole load of finishes. There's a black paint one which somebody has vigorously rubbed. And for £500 for one that has been even more vigorously rubbed. One where they forgot to even paint it. A white one. Safari green. And then there's high gloss black paint. And then, oh, I don't know if they're going to get away with using Henry Cartier Bresson's name like that. Or they're going to get sued, aren't they? And then there's titanium grey. You can even have a little engraving on the front of your lens, which will just bump up the final cost of your lens so much that you might as well just buy a 35mm Summicron spherical used. So that was my beef with them. But let's put the beef aside. How does the lens feel? Well, actually, quite good. And the 35mm 8 element is made of brass or so, which will please those Leica files. Some say it's even better than the original because the V1 Cron is not completely all brass. They made everything a bit larger, like a millimetre larger, so it can't be officially like classed as a direct copy. Nice. Oh, this the bokeh on this is nice. This is based on the 8 element 35mm Summicron. Version 1. Version 1. The expensive one. Yeah. <laughs> the one that you can't afford. Yeah, it's either full of fungus or very, very expensive. Mm. The original 8 element version 1 35mm Summicron will set you back at least 3k. I think that looks. Is that the hood off it? It's similar to the hood. That looks better? No. That looks better with the hood, doesn't it? Mm. Without the hood, it's a very compact lens. Pro. I mean, your Sony's not liking that at all. You no, it doesn't. Product mode. Mm, yeah, I have to... Product showcase. This will probably work a little bit better. <laughs> Yay! It's actually focusing on that. One difference with the triple L is that it has half stops for aperture. The original is full stops only. Otherwise, I'm not too bothered about comparing it aesthetically. What is interesting, though, is seeing what the images look like. This lens is gorgeous. Surprisingly, it's quite modern looking, but not super modern. The Leica wasn't soft and glowy like some other lenses of its time, and it has a moderate amount of contrast wide open. The Triple L pretty much has the same look. They've even gone to the lengths of using flint lead glass, which is apparently what they used in the original. Okay, so I finished lunch. Didn't feel the need to record somebody's problem. Didn't feel the need to record lunch because uh, nobody needs to see us eat. It's not very nice looking thing, is it? What about that nice shot I did of you dropping your food? Can we show that now? Roll, roll. Oh, you recording that? Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> roll the tapes. <laughs> that was a big splash. Your, ca your camera's just there. You could have worn a trench coat. Rain 
from my channel. Let's go back. And test some stuff. Test some stuff, and then probably buy some more stuff. You're gonna. Um, I don't buy anything in there. No, I, I, I literally do not buy anything. You just borrow it. You buy it, and then you sell it. Sell it about two months later. Basically, you're just paying rent for the lens. It's a good way to think of it, actually. It's actually true that if you, you justify if you, it on vintage lenses. I mean, there's always the risk that you know something goes badly wrong or you drop it, but you can think about it being cheaper to own something like you know uh, like that than it would be to rent it for any period of time. Yeah. As long as as long as you don't get attached to it and you don't want to then stick it on your shelf for the rest of forever. Yeah. If you know you're going to sell it back in six months. It's way cheaper than going on ShareGrid or somewhere and, and trying to rent it. It's a good way of thinking. That's, that's, I'm just renting stuff for a very long time. Interestingly, they were selling this lens for much less before. Then people bought them. Even more people wanted them. And then prices went up, even used. So Triple L have just raised the prices anyway. Dan is actually just borrowing this for... This might, might not be mine ever. Dan just asked the guys, can I borrow it for lunch? So, it's borrowed it. Basically, you borrow your buy, isn't it? So you can buy it. I don't know. It's Christmas, are you going to get it for me? No. I'll get you lunch. No, thank you. And Dan bought this exact one for £800 used. The problem is about, about this is I just bought a 35 1.4 spherical, right? This is what Dan does, he, he just plays around with it and he's trying to convince himself. He knows he really wants to buy it. He's telling you, oh, it's, uh, it's got this, it does this, it's amazing. I don't buy lens. <laughs> he's only convinced me. It's your missus that you need to convince. It's nice though, isn't it? Look, look, come on. Yeah, this is very nice, buy it. Let's go. But you know, I've been convinced, partly by Dan, mostly by the lens itself. When you look at the front of the lens, it has V for version number, L for lead, and C for single coating on it. It is lower contrast wide open than in a spherical, which is lovely for video, and the flaring, it does flare. And yes, it does flare by the bucket load. It's obscene, obscenely gorgeous. Probably me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I bought my, one of my first cameras watching one of your reviews. So, yeah, that was... I hope it wasn't a big mistake. <laughs> anyway, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Light lens lab. Len, lens light lab. Light lens lab. Whatever. How long have we been waiting for this light? You pressed the thing, that's why. So, nobody. <laughs> Don't die. So, the whole replica thing, you just have to realise that in the camera world there are plenty of copies. Canon and Nikon started off copying Leica and Contax respectively. Look where they are now! The amazing thing is to what lengths Triple L have gone to copying, replicating, whatever you want to call it, the original 8 element V1 35mm Summicron. The images are lovely. It does vignette, noticeably at f2, the corners are softer, and the bulk here is mostly nice with bits of specular highlights with hard edges sometimes. But the Triple L, like the original, just has nailed that perfectly imperfect look that makes the original so desired and so pricey. And the Triple L price is getting higher too. So that's why I'm getting one before the price rises or they run out of the rare flint glass they use for them. Or before they get sued. Ooh. Oh, that's good. It's good. It's good. Crikey. Yeah, it's very good. It feels lovely. Well, come on, let's put this on. It seems a little bit crazy putting that kind of lens on ZFC, but... Oh, it's actually really nice. Try, try, try that. Well, more importantly, it does look wrong. <laughs> that looks go. wrong. There you go. This is like geeky photography. Nice. What should I take pictures of? I'm going to take pictures of my own cameras. Just... I bought the, oh, bought these with the, look at that. Yeah, Nikkor 105. Do you know what's interesting about these? Look at the focus direction. So it goes in the. Canon way. Yeah. So I don't know what point they swapped. Does anybody know why Nikon focuses and mounts the other way compared to, say, Canon? If you know the answer, down below. Answers at the end of the video. I've no idea. Oh, yeah, because back then Nikon copied contacts. Obviously, they were left handed. The old Nikon S range they look like. 
contacts range showing the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And that's why. So they, that's why they stuck with it. Yeah. Interesting. I had no idea.